The biggest story in the markets this fall has been the plunging price of oil, below $80 a barrel for the first time in four years, and we may not have hit bottom yet. Energy mogul Boone Pickens is the founder and CEO of BP Capital. He joins us from Dallas. Uh, Boone, thanks so much uh, for joining us. I want to get to oil in a second, but kick it off with last night's election results. What do you think this Republican win means for this country's energy policy? You know, it. Uh, the, I haven't seen a lot out of the Republicans, but uh, they are talking energy last night. All of them mentioned energy. And you're going to have to address the Keystone Pipeline, which the president's ignored. And uh, you've got export of crude has to be addressed also. You've got this uh, strategic petroleum reserve, the SPR. That's got to be uh, looked at. And there are so many energy things that are just sitting there that haven't even been uh, discussed and you know they're big deals there's no question about it and you've got LNG liquefied natural gas is is an issue too so uh, it, lots of stuff to do but let me comment about this you know I've been around a long time and I voted for I never voted for president for anybody but a Republican but if you go back and look every time a guy is elected it's because of the of the president just before him. Reagan would have, wouldn't have been elected unless you had Carter. And then you know, as you went forward here now, you, uh, you're going to have another uh, in 16. You're going to have uh, a change then. But Obama has set it up, obviously, that he set it up for the Republicans to, uh, to really do something big. They've got a wave, but, you know, concerns I have, they've got to deliver now. They can't just go in there win and and not accomplish something so uh I'm, i feel so fortunate at my age to be around to see all this happen well you mentioned obama has basically ignored keystone pipeline john sununu just said to us 65 percent of americans are in support of it so can he ignore it any longer no you can't ignore it but but i can tell you i was in toronto uh a week ago i was in calgary the week before and the Canadians are getting tired of waiting around for us to do something. That has been on Obama's desk six years. So it's time to make a decision. Because I Listen, I used to live in Canada in the 60s. I know the Canadians. They're smart people, but when they decide to do something, they're going to do it. If that pipeline isn't going to come to the United States, they're going to take it east, and that oil is gone. We don't have a, ch a chance at it. It's a great opportunity now to do a North American Energy Alliance put together Canada, the United States, and Mexico, and then we don't need any oil from any place else. You've got it. You've taken care of the security, uh, national security uh, for the United States with that kind of alignment. And the Canadians and the Mexicans would be more than happy to make the deal. Boom, S Senator Sununu says you owe him a dollar in a bet on the price of oil. Uh, what do you think about the drop below $80 a barrel? Are we going to go any further? I mean, what would a Keystone Pipeline deal, for example, do to the price of oil? Well, Keystone Pipeline, uh, it won't have anything to do with the price of oil. You, you've, got, you've got a situation now, you have more oil than you have demand. Consequently, the price comes down. Where did the oil come from? It came from the United States. The industry in the United States has done an unbelievable job for who? Not America. They've done it for themselves, but America is also one of the winners. But we have more oil. We have increased oil production in the United States, and there are other places, small places around the world have done the same. But the United States is the one that's oversupplied the world with oil. And uh, so it's interesting. There's 92 million barrels of oil produced every day in the world. We use 20% of it, 18 million barrels. We're still importing about half of the oil that we use. But more than half of the half that we uh, import comes from Canada and Mexico. But we have cut OPEC down from 7 million barrels a day to 3 million barrels a day. We need to get rid of OPEC. OPEC is the problem. When you're buying that OPEC oil out of the Mideast, you are going to be paying the tariffs too because they pay the tariffs at ransom, and that's your money that takes care of both sides of the war. Let's put a Get out of OPEC oil. Let's put a number on it. How low do you think the price of oil can go? 
Oh, now, you, let's talk about both oils. You're talking about uh, Brent North Sea, and the air basket crude is priced off of Brent North Sea. Then you've got West Texas Intermediate, which is our uh, national price here in the United States. And it's about $4 cheaper now than Brent is. So you're looking at, I'm going to answer your question. So, but I think that you, today you're, you're, uh, you're selling oil in uh, the Permian Basin uh, in West Texas for $72. You're selling oil in the Bakken up in North Dakota for $69 a barrel. Uh, you're selling uh, Brent North Sea at $82 a barrel. How much lower can you go? You could go down to, I don't think you'll go down to $70, but you could get down in the 70s. But you've got a very important OPEC meeting coming up in uh, uh, this month, I think on the 27th of November. You'll find out there if they're going to cut supply and uh, to get price up. And uh, But advice to the industry in the United States, you, you've drilled so many wells, you've been so efficient that you have more oil than we need right now and consequently the price has come down. When I does, think that... that you, do, do you believe the declining price of oil could start to create geopolitical instability? Can Russia sustain their economy with oil prices dropping and dropping? Or is the answer well, who cares? Well, dropping and drop. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the <laughs> consumer it gets, is, uh, is the, gets the payoff with lower price for oil. Uh, natural gas prices have been, you know, low for God knows how long now because we overdrilled, got too much natural gas. You've kind of done the same thing for oil. Uh, I think the oil guys are going to be smarter. They'll slow down on their drilling and consequently let demand. But we counted on demand being up a million three. It's up half that. But you're you're coming, you know, give it a chance. This has only been going on for 30 days. So uh, the, the world hadn't changed, but uh, we, we'll see how it comes out because OPEC has got to have uh, a better price for oil than $80 a barrel. Hey, uh, Boone, let me ask you about natural gas. Uh, you say it's been too low here, but the last week we've seen a 20% jump in the price of natural gas. Just, is that just the cold snap or do you think this is a sustainable trend? I think it's it's weather. I mean, natural gas is a weather commodity, and they're talking about cold, uh, really cold here in the next two or three weeks. And we had a very cold winter last year. You could have the same thing again this year. The weather patterns are setting up for that, and uh, whether you can do or not. But uh, na natural gas is so cheap that you know, 20 percent increase. Yes. It helps the producers, doesn't hurt the consumer, and, uh, and that's all good. I don't know whether it'll hold or not. I w is weather the problem uh, with Oklahoma State as well? They've had a rough season this year. No. Uh, <laughs> have they? I, I haven't kept up with the... <laughs> no, we've got, a, we've got a situation over there that we... Uh, our offense can't do anything. Went 14 quarters without a touchdown. And uh, I don't know what, what the problem is. They haven't called me in for any advice. I know that. All right, let's go back to business Stephanie's here, not just back to football. business. I will just say that Oklahoma State is six right now, that five and four, so it's not a great season. Let's just talk natural gas for a minute. What does all this mean for shale drilling? Well, we I touched on that when I said you're going to see uh, – uh, if, if the price for oil is down at, well, let's, let's back up. Uh, seven years ago, we had 1,400 rigs running on natural gas. Today, you have 400, okay? And at, the, at that time, you had 500 running on oil. They switched over to oil because they were selling $100 oil, and now we have 1,500 rigs running on oil, 400 on natural gas. And so what's going to happen? Oil is, you're going to slow down on oil at $70 a barrel. And that's what you're looking at today in the Permian Basin. All right, all right. Uh, Boone, I wonder what, what you think then is the future. We talked about oil, we talked about natural gas. A lot of people have said coal is just 
uh, dying a slow death right now. What do you think about the future of coal? Because it's important, obviously, for a lot of workers in, in, uh, in the east, in the Midwest east. I think of it in the Midwest. You probably think of it as the east. Well, you remember what I'm for. I want to get on our own resources and get off OPEC oil. It's that simple. Right. And I think with the Republicans in here, they may decide that's a good idea. And coal is one of our resources. You're still 40% uh, uh, of your, your power generation comes off coal. And uh, I don't want to see that shut down. They've cleaned up coal. Coal is fine. We, we're the cleanest nation in the world. And we still have these environmentalists screaming and hollering about, you know, shut down coal and shut down fossil fuels and everything else. But 92 million barrels a day of oil is what the world produces. 70% of that's transportation fuel. And I've asked one of the environmentalists, I said, okay, say you shut down fossil fuels and we don't use fossil fuels for transportation. What is a solution? And this guy told me, and he's, he's a real guy, too. Uh, he's, he told me, he said, uh, look, he said, you turn it over to the government, and their research will tell us what fuel to use. Okay, well, how do you like that answer? It's not a very Hold good on. answer. How That's like, what we... How, how do you like that answer? You turn it over to the government, and the government tells you what to use? That seems to make no sense. It's a ridiculous I said, answer. how do you like that yeah, answer? It's a ridiculous answer, but it's kind yeah, of a hypothetical a, guy, too. So, I mean... No, it's not a hypothetical guy. It's Tom Stiers who it was. So uh, he's there. He's important to the Democrats. He's important to the liberals. He has his own ideas. He's putting his money up, and he should be allowed to talk. I just don't agree with him is the point. You're going to use fossil fuels for the next 100 years. All right, we'll All get right, the Boone, two Hold together. on. We have to leave it. Who would, you like, who would you like to see as our next president? I'm too old. That's not true. So that Give us takes an answer. <laughs> They, uh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how it unfolds.